Hey YouTube, this is Praxis Prepper, and I want to talk just very briefly about the Trump election. Um, I was sent a few messages, people said that they wanted me to comment on it. Um, if anything, I think there's a problem with too many people who know too little, saying too much about, uh, about all this. I think people really need to kind of keep their mouths shut and just see what happens to some degree. Um, and by that I don't mean that I'm like a Trump supporter and I'm saying you all need to shut up now because he won. I actually did not vote for Trump. I didn't vote for Clinton either. I voted for Gary Johnson. Um, I, uh, when I woke up uh, in the morning and, and saw that he had won, I, uh, I, I think I was less disappointed than I would have been if Clinton had won. <laughs> that was my feeling on it. At least it's something new. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, this is coming from a place I'm not. I was not a Trump supporter, uh, but I think people need to just sort of wait and see. And like I said, stop talking about things that they really don't know that much about. Um, I think the people that know the least seem to speak the most. Um, um, and so I'm going to follow that as well. Uh, and I want to keep this very specific uh, because my channel is about um, SHDF preparedness, uh, you know, uh, societal collapse, the, uh, things of that nature. Uh, and I want to uh, talk about his election through that lens. The way I see it, it kind of breaks down into three different categories uh, um, that, he, that he'll have an impact. Uh, I see uh, an economic impact, He'll have an environmental impact. Uh, he'll have a political impact within our country and a political impact abroad. So that's four different categories I want to just briefly talk about. Um, since he's a businessman, and that's maybe what we know the most about him, um, why don't we start with the, um, the economic impact. And I think that there's a big question mark there. Um, certainly, a, a lot of what he has said uh, through the campaign, to me anyway, seems really overly, that it overly simplifies our world economy. Um, and my sense is that if he's actually going to do a lot of these things, um, at least in the short term, I, I could see them as having very negative uh, in, uh, economic impacts. Um, again, I'm not an economist and I don't know, um, but that's sort of my sense is that his view is, is a lot of wanting to kind of go back to the way things were. And that's not the way the world works a lot of times. Um, but again, I think we have to wait and we have to see. Um, but uh, one thing that um, I think that we can say um, about uh, uh, his, uh, his economic impact is that a lot of it has to do with, um, well, insofar as the economy is sort of a collective imaginary dream of all of us, uh, where if we're all thinking very bullishly and positive about the future, that we're going to kind of you know, self-manifest that. And if we're all very bearish uh, and worried about it, like, uh, you know, FDR said, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. That, you know, if people get nervous about the economy, they tend to manifest the, the actual fears that they're, they're worried about. So insofar as people are pumped up and inspired by Trump, if he can do that, then I think that, the, that in that way, and he seems like he's got a lot of people pumped up, um, I, no, after the, right after he got elected, there was a, a stock market crash, and then there was a stock market rally. So, I mean, nobody really knows what they feel about it at the moment, but if he can inspire people, I think he can have a positive impact um, in that way. As, as to long term and whether or not he really means all the things that sounded kind of overly simple during the campaign, we'll see. So I'm going to keep my mouth shut on that, beyond that. Uh, let's talk about environmental. Um, a lot of people are preparing for various environmental uh, catastrophes, you know, whether it be you know, sea level rise or, you know, uh, uh, you know solar phenomena or whatever. Um, there, there are, there are uh, human ways that we interact with that. Um, I'm not going to address whether or not climate change is real or not, because when it was just a thing that affected the dinosaurs, um, it was fairly non-controversial. Everyone was like, oh yeah, carbon dioxide went up and you know, got hotter on the planet. It only got controversial once there was like money to be made off of ignoring it. So, you know, let's just pretend that it might actually exist. Um, and insofar as Donald Trump means that he really doesn't think that there's any connection between our uh, emission of gases which have been scientifically proven to warm the planet and the planet warming, Insofar as he believes that, um, I think that there is a chance that that will lead to more environmental problems, disasters, catastrophes, 
SHTF for people. Um, but even if you want to leave climate change aside, um, because honestly, the, the effects of climate change, that, that's for our kids and our grandkids. We're getting a little bit of a taste of it now, but I mean, that's not, that's not right here and now. Let's talk about right here and now environmental. Um, if his sense of uh, a lot of this kind of deregulation of industry um, in, in regards to their environmental impact, if that really moves through, I mean, we're already seeing a lot of gas lines, gasoline pipelines rupturing, uh, you know, over in California, or was it Northern California, the natural gas, uh, you know, that was releasing and, you know, people had to evacuate and everything. Um, so insofar as there is less oversight of industry, um, I don't think you could argue against the idea that there would be more problems like that. They just happen. Whenever people build things, there's always technical issues and sometimes the things fall apart. Um, you know, I, I, on the flip side, I think you could argue, well, there was that thing that happened, a, you know, a year or so ago where the, you know, the EPA was trying to clean up um, some, like, toxic waste site. It was, like, gold, gold mine tailings or something like that. And then they polluted the whole river. So if we, you know, got rid of the EPA, then there'd be less of that. Okay, yeah. So that happened once, but that was when they were cleaning up, you know, an a, a, a industry-caused uh, mess that if there had been regulation back then, then the, there wouldn't have been a mess to clean up in the first place. Um, so... I, I think that it's fairly clear to say that if there are more projects like that going on and there is less oversight of that, that's just the way things go. You know, people try to cut corners, and when corners get cut, mistakes happen, and you know, disasters happen. And disasters and mistakes even happen when people don't try to cut corners. So, the more of that that's going on, I think that environmentally, that is something that is possibly going to be increased in environmental. SHTF scenarios uh, with the Trump presidency. The other two factors, uh, internal politics. Uh, well, certainly, right after the election, we saw there's riots and, uh, well, I don't know, there were more protests than riots, but whenever there's stuff like that, when people get passionate, you know, very often it eventually gets to violence, especially, you know, if people feel like they're suffering or they're hurting or, or, or in danger. Um, but I don't think you can say that that's a Trump election specific issue because Honestly, if Hillary had been uh, elected, especially if she'd been elected in the same way that Trump was elected, where, like, if it was reversed and Trump had gotten the popular vote, but Hillary had schemed and connived her way into the presidency by winning the Electoral College, especially if that was the case, um, I, I, I'm certain that there would have been, you know, protests and, and, and possibly violence, you know, from people on, on, the, on the opposite side, especially with a lot of the rhetoric of a lot of the freedom-minded, liberty-minded community. Um, so I don't think that you can pin that on a, on a Trump election. That would have happened either way. Um, what, uh, what I can say, uh, or what I think I can say about a, uh, a Trump presidency and how that will impact civil unrest, and this is, I think, probably the biggest increased concern with the Trump election, is the, a greater chance of, of civil unrest in the short term, is a lot of what he talks about, about uh, the austerity, measures that he wants to implement to get our country out of the red and into the black, which is a good thing. I mean, you can't just ring up debt forever. Um, but um, because we've kicked the can down the road so far on this, um, there's going to be a lot of pain if he really is serious about the level of austerity that he's talking about. Uh, there's a lot of people that have become addicted to um, a certain degree of handout from uh, the government. And if that goes away, right or wrong, those people are going to be pissed. Uh, and when people get pissed, and when they get hungry, and when they see their kids hungry, people tend to get violent. Again, right or wrong, whether it's their fault or not, that's the result of it. Uh, you know, you might remember there was this thing called the French Revolution, which I, I think there was some blood involved in that. You know, and you know, when that happens, a lot of times the people that get targeted are the wrong people. And if that happens in our uh, in our country, a lot of innocent people are going to uh, feel the the rage um, undeservedly. But like I said, at the end of the day, when people get angry, when they get hungry, when they see their kids hungry, shit hits the fan. So I I see that as a very increased possibility um, with with, with the, the Trump presidency. Now again, if Hillary had been elected and we kept doing the status quo. This would have come up eventually anyway, and it would have been worse. The sooner you can get this stuff, the sooner you can take your medicine, you know, the, the, the less awful it's going to be. 
Um, but the reality is it's, it seems like we might be about to take a big spoonful of medicine, and that's going to suck for a lot of people, um, and they're going to take it out on a lot of other people. It's going to suck for them too. So, so that would be the number one sort of uh, um, increased threat that I see from the, the election of Trump. Um, last, uh, and this is the, the, the rosy lining, uh, international politics. Uh, at least at the moment, I, I feel I'm breathing a bit of a sigh of relief. Um, we saw the way that the Obama, Hillary Clinton, neoconservative view of the world was heading us. We, that we were heading towards confrontation with Russia, who is a nuclear power, and, you know, shit was going to get real <laughs> at some point. Um, I'm really glad that we stepped away from that. That was my number one fear about a Hillary presidency, was that we were seemed dead set on that kind of confrontation, that it was always going to be, it had to only be U.S. number one, no other peer nations, and we were going to, you know, go down kicking and screaming and fighting um, to retain that. Um, so I see that as a positive silver lining. Now, the, all, a lot of the metrics that underlie that are still there. Um, resource limitations, um, you know, population, uh, you know, labor, uh, and, and economic issues and all that, those are all still there. So, you know, I don't think we should take our, our eye off the ball. There are plenty of nuclear armed nations that we are at some point probably going to be competing with. Uh, and, you know, I think we need to keep our, our eye on that. But I feel like we bought ourselves a little time with this. That's my thoughts on the Trump election. I'm not going to re-address it. Um, I, like I said, I think people talk about it too much, um, but I felt I wanted to address just those four points. Um, I hope that gives you some direction and um, maybe something to think about, uh, about where you might want to refocus your focus over the next couple of years. But most of all, let's just wait and see and watch. Remember our values. Uh, don't let them be trampled upon by anyone. Uh, you know, always speak up if you think that you see something that's wrong. But at the same time, you know, I think we've got to give people a chance to, to try. And uh, we'll see what happens. So that's it. Thank you for watching.